Hello, Melly here. Really quickly, before we jump into this episode, we want to give you a warning about the episode coming out because it has some strong language. So if you don't want to hear about mental health, suicide, child death, um, what else did we talk about? A lot of sad stuff. If you're dealing with trauma and are not comfortable listening to people talk about eating disorders and other kinds of traumatic experiences, please, uh, listener discretion is advised. Yeah, we don't want someone that's in a bad space to be in an even worse space because of us. Mm. Um, So just take this as a warning. If you're not comfortable, just click out now. We'll see you next week. No hard feelings. I know this is a very hard topic to talk about. Mm. Tears are involved in this episode. Um, So, yeah. See ya. Bye. (laughs) So, so. Red leather, yellow leather. Sorry. Bop, 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 bop. Cool. <clears throat> Hello, everyone. <laughs> and welcome to another Under the Plum Bob episode. We are that podcast about the Sims game. We avoid talking about the real world by talking about our made up ones. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I'm Melly with Team Llama. I'm Caitlin, also with Team Llama. And I'm Julia. Usually behind the scenes, very much in front of the mic lately. So, hello. Hello. We, just, we really like your accent. We want you to talk more. <laughs> I'll, do, I'll do my damnest. My damnest. Okay. It's a new year, new roles. Stop being behind the scenes. You're not here <laughs> with us. <laughs> I'm stuck in the past. Talking about the past, 2020 was... A lot. Um, and 2021 is looking to gear up to be more of the same. The worst. <laughs> Honestly, it's been three weeks of this year. I'm almost <laughs> tired. Yeah, and that could be a lot on everyone mentally. Um, so today we're going to help you and talk about self-care because... That's important. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it turns out that your Sims showcase self-care actively in all of the games. Who Many different ways. Yes. Yes. So we're going to talk about physical self-care and mental health care, which I need, but I'm not (laughs) going to because I'm American and it's expensive. It's expensive. So we're just going to be sad. (laughs) Yeah, basically. (laughs) That's the motto for my life. Be sad. Yes, don't You're lose poor, your sparkle. Be sad. <laughs> and I just keep getting a lot of TikTok recommendations from like therapists that are on TikTok talking about stuff. So I'm just like, maybe I have a lot of issues. <laughs> the amount of people who have figured out what their issues are like through TikTok is astounding. Like the amount of people are like, well, I saw the- these things on TikTok and they kept talking about these things. And then I talked to a doctor about it and it turns out that that was correct. Like the <gasps> yeah. amount of people who are like, I w- I'm now on the right medication because TikTok led me in the right direction. Is like, we really just need more people to talk about mental health. Thank <laughs> you, Gen things- Z, for saving our lives. It's such a taboo topic, but it shouldn't be because we all go through stuff in life. Mm-hmm. Um, and keeping all of that in only makes us worse. So let's normalize mental health talk. Yes, so let's do that right now. <laughs> so when you talk about physical self-care, what are you, what are you talking about? What's physical self-care? Um, well, physical, you have to like actually do it. Activities, that's my main source of self-care. Um, in The Sims, we can go to the spa. That's always been very relaxing, except if you're like me and you don't like being touched by people and it makes you more uncomfortable <laughs> than when you went in. But the music and the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. That stresses me out, surprisingly. I feel like, I don't know, it just gives me like the heebie-jeebies and I can't. Are you someone who gets more calm in like where it's noisy? Like it kind of turns into white noise for you so you can zen out? No. The noise actually gives me, what's that word? 
I get very anxious when there's a lot of noise. And then there's a word for it. And I know this word because I it's something that I deal with a lot. What's the fucking word? Sensory overload? Yes. Yeah, that's it. I was going to be like, yeah. let me discreetly Google. Well, <laughs> I just heard yeah. someone talk about it on another podcast I listened to the day after before yesterday i think they talked about how she was burned out and had sensory overloads so she just yeah. had to sit in like a quiet room because i get was that like... a lot like if i'll go out with my husband pre-covid times i'll like let him know hey like my sensory stuff is acting out can we step away for a while and he's mm. very good at being like yeah like let's, let's go um but yeah i don't like people touching me don't touch me <laughs> That's fair, though. Also, especially now, it's going to be normalized. So, you know, you're going to have a lot of friends to not touch. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, but our sims like it. Um, While they're there, they also get relaxed and they get into that inspired mood lit, which is pretty fun. And that just makes you want to do things. Go out into the world and be an active member of society. Sim society. I think that's a podcast, too. Or, like, a YouTube channel. The Sim Society? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Correct. Yes. Hi. <laughs> um, some other things that you can do in the spa. Spa bath. A bubble bar. Whisper steam. Personal steamer. Which is, like, a sauna, I'm assuming. Yeah, it was in Sims 1. They had, like, it was, like, a capsule. So they closed in the Sims. And they had a little towel on their face. And it looked... I always wanted that. I would freak the fuck out in there. I'm also claustrophobic. Oh, my God, so. girl. <laughs> I have all the issues. You were not built to last. I'm sorry. I really wasn't. I feel like every day God's you were built like to today's the day Oof. that you're gonna go down. And it's not I persevered, but at what cost? I am now crying. Oh honey. <laughs> but we are here and you can get a big ass steaming room if you want. Like a you can get a whole ass sauna. Don't settle for a personal steamer. Oh yeah, you can make it as big as you want in the Sims. Mm-hmm. That's one of the benefits. Yes. I have the spa day pack, but I've never built a sauna. I should go. <gasps> what? It's amazing. I just like, don't know where to put it. Like, this is a normal house. Where do I put a sauna? I In like putting basement. A basement would be good, or attic if you want to be weird about it. I feel oh. like that'd be a weird place. An attic yeah. sauna? No. Yeah. We had a sauna. In our <laughs> I feel basement. like there would be a leak problem eventually. <laughs> yeah. Or molding, like mold. Basement seems like a good idea. Yeah, it's already, like, damp and, like, wet down there anyways mm-hmm. because of how gravity and heat works. Ugh, so I think the sauna would be the best. Let me school you. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Scientifically and architecturally speaking, a basement would be the best place for mm-hmm. a sauna. Also or massage in- tables, but like I said, I don't like being touched. But your Sims do. So Nobody says no to a massage in the Sims. That's literally a title of one of our episodes. <laughs> Well, oh, actually, it's true. <laughs> so my current sim, um, she went to get a massage, and I guess she didn't like it because afterwards, her and the masseuse got into a fight, and oh. she gave him a thumbs down. <gasps> oh. So maybe my sim is me, um, unintentionally. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> she didn't like it. It's a Sims Four feature. You can put your trauma and your issues into your sim self. <laughs> Yay! Well, it is a simulation after all, and if I'm going to be miserable, so are my sims. So. <laughs> this is the part where I break down and cry on oh. an episode. Well, oh. if you have to, do it. Just, you know, as my counselor says, you need to cry. Just cry. That's a good mm-hmm. mantra to live by. You need to cry, just just do it. Yes, because our sims do it all the time. Like society, human <laughs> society has taught us not to cry and not to show emotions. That some emotions are valuable and some are like annoying or discerning. We shouldn't show. But our sims don't give a fuck. When they're okay. angry, they're angry. When they want to cry, they cry. If that plate's in the way of their walking path, they will stomp their foot and wave their hands at you and telling you to fix it because this isn't right. Mm-hmm. So we should all just put our foot down and wave at our mental wave health. At <laughs> Vaguely at the sky. Yes. <laughs> I know you're up there. Fix this. We are in a simulation. Confirmed. It is. It is. 
<sighs> but there are some things that in The Sims you could do that will actually make you feel better activity wise. This mostly applies to if your Sim has this certain trait, doing those things in their trait will make them happy. Mm -hmm. um, like for people that have that gaming trait, when you play video games, it makes you happy and it makes you inspired. Um, I'm always making my Sims play Sims Forever because I think it's hella ironic. <laughs> We're gonna meta this. Meta. Well, also now yeah. with the sentiments, if you uh, like acquire a gaming trait or the sent or like some of those traits, it also boosts these moodlets as well. Yeah. So now it's extra much just what is it? Mental health punanza. Yeah. This the Sims is getting a little bit too realistic for my taste to the point where <laughs> Sims know that there's simulations now. Um and that's scary. That's like a Black Mirror episode waiting to happen. Unless it, it already has happened. I stopped watching after the first season. There's... I can send you one episode. There's one episode where, like, you can make a personal assistant, but it's, like, yourself. It's... I'll, I can send... I can tell you about it later. <laughs> I don't like that. Other things you can do. You can paint... Your mood does affect your paintings here. So if you're sad, you can paint a sad painting. If you're flirty, you can make a flirty painting, which sometimes isn't flirty at all, but whatever. You can sell and it for more money, though. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. More so. emotions, more money. That's how it yes. works, right? <laughs> it's very realistic. Very. And then we can garden, which is something I do a lot. I, I like gardening and In plants. real life? Yeah, in real yes. life. Love that for me. You can mm -hmm. talk to your plants, which in real life, if you talk to your plant, it's supposed to make them healthier because you are giving them extra oxygen. So or you can talk do to like, your plant. You can do like Crawley did in uh, Good Omens where he screamed at them. So Yeah. <laughs> to scare them. <laughs> scare them to grow. Yes. <laughs> he just like insulted them a lot. And there was one that was like his enemy. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> is this person okay? No, oh, he's, he's a, a demon. demon. <laughs> so, oh. And he's okay. sexy. And his uh, boyfriend is an angel. So there's a little bit of tension there. So Wait, what and is like, this? Good Omens? It's about the... So the the book back says like... Uh, the So the apocalypse is on its way. But the representatives of Heaven and Hell have lost the Antichrist. And they don't know where he went. And it's them trying to kind of they they decided they like Earth because they lived on Earth all these years. They're like, well, we don't want it to go away. We like it, but like heaven and hell are like, well, we're, the big battle's about to start. Let's go. So it's them trying to like, and they don't know where the Antichrist is that starts the apocalypse. So they're like, a, we have to find the Antichrist because we don't know where he is. We we messed that up. And b, like, we don't want this to happen anymore. So it's them trying. It's on uh, Amazon. Also, it's a book. <gasps> The oh. TV show is really good. It's David Tennant mm -hmm. and Michael Sheen. They just mm -hmm. love each mm -hmm. other. So at what point do we start adding trackers to Antichrist? Because the amount of movies that I've seen that involve the Antichrist being the Antichrist is too much. I think this one is because there was a uh, there was a switcheroo that happened at yeah. the, uh, the birth of mm -hmm. it. Interesting. They, they thought they... They thought they put him in the hands of a U.S. politician, but he ended up being raised somewhere in England instead, in a suburb. So the Antichrist has the English accent, I'm assuming. Yes, because he's a ba he's a child. It's yes. like a ten year old. Yes. It's mm -hmm. a child Antichrist. Yeah. yeah he's, oh my god. But he's very cute, though. He finds Atlantis. It's <laughs> true. Well, and then, uh, find, it's fine. Well, the witch finds him and like teaches him about like global warming. <laughs> so yes. he decides. <laughs> so he tries to save the planet. <sighs> Meanwhile, you watch a uh, an angel and a demon kind of fall in love throughout the course of it. Oh, it's amazing! I've never been so horny in my entire life. <laughs> and on that note, you can also water your plants with your tears if you're sad. <laughs> <laughs> Does that affect the quality of your plant? I don't know because I've never done it. It marks them as watered, so <laughs> it does the job. Exactly. You can be sad and still get and still get the things done. I guess <laughs> that's a good way of looking at it. 
Like, yes, I am crying, but I have done my task for the day. Don't judge me how I get it done. I just got it done. Um, cooking. Cooking is also something that Sims like to do, especially our foodie Sims. Mm-hmm. You get better quality meals so you can stop burning your fucking popcorn every time you make it, Melissa. That was me, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> what is happening? Is everyone burning popcorn now? Yes. I don't know if it's like the update or something or I'm just really bad oh, at making popcorn. I thought real you were life calling too. out no, Melissa, in real life. like Melissa, like I was like, I burnt, I almost burned down my apartment with popcorn. That was me. <laughs> that was my story. Oh, don't, like the other Melissa. Don't assign it to somebody else. That was my, <laughs> too many Melissas. <laughs> my bad. I'm sorry. When I get mad at myself, I say my real name and <gasps> I call myself Melly. Um, so that's how I know I'm upset at me. Oh, see, I, use I my do legal the same. name. Yes. Although Melissa is not my legal name, but for legal reasons, I will not say what my real name is. I know your husband told us this in a stream, but I cannot remember. <laughs> Good. <laughs> <laughs> and wood carving. My current sim has really been into wood carving. Um, when she is happy and inspired, she makes excellent quality sculptures. And then I sell them on Plopsy for more money because selling stuff on the internet to stranger than having them give you a good rating makes you really happy. Mm -hmm. Oh, I fucked that up. Hold on. Okay. And I do that in real life too. I sell stuff on in Etsy and when someone gives me a good review, it makes my day. And when they don't review it, I question whether what I sent them was good or not. And then I start questioning myself and I contemplate closing down my Etsy shop. And it's a whole thing. Also, unrelated note, you can uh, rate and subscribe to us on Apple Podcast. Uh, we like <laughs> positive and reinforcement. <laughs> we need a lot of reinforcements. <laughs> You yeah. require validation, and if you don't, we're gonna shut down this podcast because no one likes us anymore. Oh boy! Uh, look what you did to Keep Melly. <laughs> Melly, <laughs> Melly, enter the nose. Out the, enter the nose. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> slowly, slowly. Sorry, sorry. And then we just hear it, and she passes out, hits her head. This on the would desk. be a good time to meditate. And do some yoga while we shoot the podcast. So if you'll excuse me. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Focus. Okay. Forward. We're back. We're good. <sighs> that didn't happen. We're just going to cut that whole mental breakdown. Ow. But meditating can really boost your relationships. You can teleport into a different state of mind and if you're a sim you can teleport somewhere else using the shift um left click yeah cheat and then yeah. just get the fuck out of there because that's weird i don't like meditating it's weird i don't like head empty no no thank you <laughs> and also wellness is attached to yoga so if you do enough yoga you can teleport yes which is my favorite <laughs> weird mix up of those two skills of like sure you're bendy so you can teleport now why not it's my favorite thing it's so realistic there are some people out there who like doing physical activities um that's not me but mm -hmm. if you are you enjoy playing games like basketball and climbing walls and if your sims are into that kind of stuff they get a happy energetic mood lit and then they're too hyper and they can't go to sleep after that because they're too energized and it's a whole thing. They can make protein bars. Yeah. In real life, I remember one time I swam in high school and so did my older sister. And my older sister one day came into swim practice after school and went up to our coach and was like, I need a super hard set. They're like, what? I'm like, I need a hard set. I need like whatever, whatever is a super hard like workout that you have i need to like give it to me i want to do it right now because like something happened because teenagerdom and she was like i need to like do something right now or i'm going to scream and he was like oh god okay. <laughs> and she was just in her own lane just like swim 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 swim, swim as the rest of us were doing stuff and i was like oh no something she's the happened. michael phelps of the world yeah <laughs> did you feel Kudos better to those people though yeah. like can just like take out mm -hmm. their frustrations through physical activity 
Elements I can. A, and a personal but. one, you can scream in the water and nobody can, people can't hear you as well. So at least don't I'm, scream in the water. You'll drown. No, it won't. Just don't like inhale. You're fine. I used to do it all the time in high school because high school was a hard time. So like Aww. have a bad day, just like scream and then stop screaming, take a breath and then go back and just, and also if you cry, no one knows. So They'll know your face will be puffy. You're in the water already, so you like you're exercising, so you're like you're all like, and you have goggles on. Trust me, <laughs> as someone who did it in swim practice, <laughs> the surrounded pro by, has spoken. Surrounded yes. by thirty people, nope, they don't know because wow. you don't take, and they're like, oh, did your your goggles must have leaked because your eyes are red? You're like, yes, that's what happened. <laughs> <laughs> Life tips with Caitlin. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Sometimes when I get super anxious and I can't stay at home, I go for a walk. But now I live on the fourth floor with no elevator. So I just Ooh. now I really don't want to go because it's 45 steps up. I don't want that. Mm-mm-mm. But yeah, those are some physical stuff that you can do in The Sims and in your life because sometimes therapy isn't an option for you. Um, Some people forget that getting help mentally is a privilege because not everyone can afford it or you just don't have the resources where you live at. So if you can get it, like awesome, I'm glad you're getting help, but those of us that can't, like me, we we do stuff physically to help us get better. But there's also things that showcase for in Sims that kind of show you like mentally kind of how to take care of yourself. And one of the things like throughout all of the games is that that needs panel. The Sims are very privileged to have we can see their needs panel and see what they need to see so like the bladder hunger energy fun social hygiene like sometimes you're like well i feel like shit and then you take a shower and you're like i feel better i didn't realize i didn't need to take a shower i needed to take a shower so bad and just feel clean to make myself Mm -hmm. feel better and there was their uh what is this person's name before i continue before i read their work There was an article written on workbrighter.com called What Playing the Sims Taught Me About Self-Care and Productivity. And what? Where is the author's name? In the bottom. What is your name? Well, I would love to tell you who wrote this, but I cannot. (laughs) Not because we don't want to, but they did not put their name on the article. But we will link it. We'll link it in our show notes. Um, but she wrote an article about like how this the sim like she was playing the Sims game and she kind of had a moment of seeing the light about self care on herself. And she said that I was playing The Sims last week, and this is what reminded me how badly I needed to create this video and blog post. I was playing the POV of a freelance writer, and I couldn't get her to go write her book in the study she worked from home so she didn't have to go anywhere just like all of us haha and all i needed her to do was sit down and write and she wouldn't but every time my sim would just walk over to the computer and just wouldn't sit down my girl would literally just not sit down and write and i I could relate to that so much and when i thought about it she couldn't write and do her job and be productive because she hadn't had enough fun and she was too stressed out she was burnt out because she hadn't taken care of one of her needs They have little moodlets in the corner that explain their character's moods, and I could clearly see that she was too tense to write. And it was just an important lesson for this author as a writer, as a recovering workaholic, and a self-care advocate. She couldn't work until she had some fun, so I let her sit down with the computer and play a game first, like like the person writing this article was doing. So it was just like a big, and like, and just that was a huge moment for me, remembering all of their needs, no matter how trivial sounding they need need to be need they need to be tended to unless you use cheat codes winky face so it's just like noticing like oh hey maybe have i like when you're hangry like oh i didn't eat today maybe that's why i'm so mad (laughs) 
and just slightly acknowledging what you need, like what you actually need. And everybody needs different things, right? So some people's fun is different. What Melly said earlier, like I can't, gardening stresses me out because I don't understand it. I couldn't garden. I like, but playing games calms me down because I can kind of zone out and recover. So different strokes for different folks kind of thing. Sometimes you just need a little snack to get you through the day because you're hungry and you're not aware that you're hungry. And I am very guilty of that. I will work and work and work and then forget to eat. And it's too late. We can't eat anymore because I'm past that eat point. I'm just hangry now. But a snack calms you down. And by the way, the person that wrote this article, her name is Brittany Berger. She has her whole website and blog is about self-care and productivity for the workplace. Um, So I would check her out. Thank you for finding that. I was having issues. Sure. There's also a Reddit thread that we found. It's the Sims and mental health. And this site was just like the... Oh, the person who posted it just noticing that like playing the sims helps a lot with anxiety uh uh the person like because they were uh, this up the username is deleted so we cannot say who the username is uh but they said because my problems with addiction i was scared to get into video games i thought it was unproductive hobby i would just get i would just get sucked into it they forgot i guess i forgot how healthy normal hobbies were kind of up or kind of how healthy normal hobbies can be when up to a point. Uh, they played for a weekend and they got sucked in, as we all do, because Sims have like two modes: either not playing or you're playing for 15 hours straight. Mm-hmm. And here's a big thing about this game: a lot of us don't have much control over our own lives, even though we try really hard to. There are just some things that we just cannot control. Um, And The Sims is a very good thing that we have total control over. We make the scenarios, we play how we want to play, and we make our Sims do what we want. So it's a good mental escape if you just feel like, I can't do this in real life, so let me just go into my safe space. Let me control something. I need something while the world's turning. But there's also reference, there's also things that Sims does that like references mental health. Like in Sims 2, Sims could literally have a breakdown if not taken care of correctly. Because Sims 2 focused a lot on the aspirations of different Sims. And Sims had, and the aspiration meter was fueled by the wants and fears. So obviously the more you did their wants, the higher up their aspiration meter would go. If you did fears, it would lower it. It was platinum, gold, upper green, lower green, mid red, deep red. Uh, And there were different, and depending on what aspirate, there was only like six or seven aspirations in Sims 2 because it's Sims 2. It was a baby. It was just barely learning how to be. But depending on like, like if you had the fortune aspiration, obviously you would have wants of you want to make money. You would have fears mm-hmm. of losing your money or being repoed or being fired from work, things like that. And if you didn't do any and say you didn't do any wants and you didn't do any fears, the aspiration meter would slowly go down because you're not doing things that you want to do. You're not doing things to further your life. So you kind of slowly start seeing that meter go down over time because you're not taking care of what you want and if it got to the deep red Uh your sim could go into aspiration failure uh so the sims would start to show signs of distress before they hit bottom so like they would uh they would start to worry like you would see an, an emotion come up that they'd worry and they start to cry more often which is like not a good sign and so like depending on what aspiration they have that would change what their aspiration failure would do. So I have those examples. Are you ready? I'm never been more ready. Is it a llama episode if I don't read off the list? No. So no. the grow up the grow up aspiration, the toddlers will start to cry. Who's letting their toddler go into aspiration fail? Oh. Toddlers and kids also have like fears of grandparents dying a lot. 
Meaning, that is hella dark. Meaning, so which happens dark. often. Yeah, which happens. The pe- like, if you're doing a legacy, the the grandparents could die, so your kid, your children, your toddler could go into aspiration failure. Toddlers will cry. Children will smash flower beds, urns, kick tombstones, rubbish bins, and throw tantrums. I get um, everything they're... about kicking tombstones. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they could destroy one. Far. Uh, I think they will also swing on a fridge. Teenagers and kids will swing on fridges if they're an aspiration failure. Uh, family aspiration. The Sim will pull out a sack of flour with a face painted on it and begin to rock it and cuddle it like a baby. Uh, the fortune aspiration. The Sims will start to panhandle for simoleons. They'll stand with an old tin can and a piece of cardboard with a with the simoleon sign on it. Uh, the grilled cheese aspiration. Obviously, everyone's favorite. The Sims will draw Mr. Grilled Cheese Sandwiches on a cardboard and kiss it and then attempt to eat it. The Knowledge Sim. Sims will pull out a ball with a face and a uh, motorboard and name it Professor Von Ball and talk to it. So that's got to be a reference to uh, Castaway, right? I never played it, but uh, yes, I bet you're right. Uh, pleasure aspiration. Sims will put a lampshade on their head and do a lively dance. Cat. One second. Oh my god, you meant the movie Castaway? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm, sorry. I'm so dumb. Oh, with the uh, Tom, Tom Hanks. Hanks. Yes. Oh, what's his name? Uh, Wilson. Wilson. Uh, popularity. Sims will have a lively conversation with paper cups and decorative drawn on face. Uh, romance aspiration. Sims will cuddle and kiss a sponge mop with a decorated plate attached to it. So. I everybody's did a lot when I was 12. <laughs> everybody's <laughs> breakdowns look different depending on who you are. Um, so at, when they have the breakdown, your sim will be uncontrollable. You can't make them do anything. And then a sim shrink will literally pop down Mary Poppins style from somewhere and help them. So when they reach aspiration, a sim shrink will appear and cheer the sim up. So they'll get like, they come out with like a little like, he kind of looks like Einstein and he comes out with like a little squiggly thing and kind of hypnotizes them out of it. And then they, they get a little bit happier. And then so they kind of recover enough that you can try to help them after they went through that. Uh, if a sim is not an aspiration failure, they cannot see the shrink. So any people who only the sim in aspiration failure can see the shrink. Um, do not, you cannot make, because every, this is always the question, you cannot make the shrink selectable, he will break your game, do not try to woohoo the shrink that nobody else can see. It's not a good move. I'm also going to give a slight nod to the social bunny, because if your social meter gets super low, a social bunny will appear. Uh, it's a human size being in a rabbit outfit that's missing an eye that comes in like th- four colors blue pink yellow another one and you can talk to the you can interact with the social money you can talk to them you can you can be rude to them if you want so i have a pretty good in real life aspiration failure (laughs) um that i can talk about i guess to bring perspective into this we are going to get a little bit deep so I apologize in advance. Um, I guess trigger warning for anyone listening, I am going to mention um, death and children and that fun stuff. So if you've listened to our earlier episodes in one of our, I think it was also a mental health episode, ironically, I mentioned that I've always wanted to have kids. Kids is something that isn't the easiest for me because of my medical condition and all of that. And then something that I've come to terms with in life, you know, I can't have kids easily. It'll take a while. I ended up having a child. I got pregnant. I mentioned that also in an episode. And then I never followed up on that because shit went left. Um, I ended up having a stillbirth. So obviously that didn't happen and then I almost died which was fun and then the recovery process was a 
huge mental toll. I went through basically what a sim would go through a failure mentally. Like I failed my one goal and I kind of went through what your sim would go through when they went through a failure. I had to see a shrink for it because it's something that you can't just mentally bounce back from. Um, that didn't help. <laughs> I went through medication for it. That made it worse. I thought about ending my life at one point. Um, so this happens in real life to people. We have certain goals and we don't achieve them. And it sends us down a road that we think that we cannot get back from. And we feel like okay, we've hit the bottom. There's no coming back from this. What do I have more to lose? And that's when people tend to turn to harming themselves. And sadly, not everyone can get out of that mental space. And that's why suicide rates, especially in young people, are so high because they don't know where else to turn. People don't talk about the dark side of mental health. A lot of us laugh it off. Like, yeah, like I'm mentally unstable right now and I can't, I feel like this is it for me. But in a joking matter, we don't actually like think about hurting ourselves or think about killing ourselves. But some people do and some people actually go through with it. I know I've had some people in my family go through with it and after the fact, a lot of people are like, oh, we didn't see it. Oh, oh yeah, they mentioned it, but we didn't take it seriously. And also there, there isn't a lot of conversation about like postpartum either. Like pregnancy is does a lot to your hormone. It does a lot to everything. Mm -hmm. And like there isn't a lot of discussion of like m a lot of women go through postpartum. Like it doesn't like my like I know a lot of people in my life that went through it afterwards but they're like we don't know what to do because it feels like I'm alone on this no one talks about it it's like a lot of people do that's just not talked about which is a shame yeah. because it's more common than you would be led to believe and then to add on top of it the loss of a kid I didn't have anyone to talk to about all of this I couldn't turn to my family because they were also grieving they lost my mom lost a grandchild. My mother-in-law lost a grandchild. And I could talk to Danny about it. Danny's my husband, if you don't know. But at the same time, he's also going through the same thing. So you can't just put all of my burden on him. Or at least I didn't want to, even though he constantly told me, hey, you can talk to me about it. I'm there for you. But you don't want to do that because I know mentally that he's also going through this with me. And you just are alone for it and you don't know when to ask for help and I know a lot of new mothers go through this too they don't ask for help they think that they have to go through this alone and you don't have to do this alone you can talk to someone you can join groups mm -hmm. but the, my point is if you are someone that is going through something it's okay to ask for help and you're not going through it alone um, mental illness is something that a lot of people go through surprisingly, but people just don't talk about it. And we need to start normalizing talking about it. Don't go through this alone because you're just hurting yourself more in the long run. And I wish that I would have clicked on that earlier instead of going through months and months of being down on myself and almost getting to that point where I was not going to be able to come back from it. But I'm better now. <laughs> I still get sad every once in a while. Obviously, it's a traumatic thing to go through. And it's sad to think about, but it happened. Um, I'm here. I'm still living. And I believe that everything happens for a reason. Not too long afterward, the world went to shit. So I'm glad that I didn't have a little person to have to put them through all of that. But yeah, get help, guys, please. And I think, like, because Sims 2 came out, like, 2007? 2000. 
Four? Six? Three. Four? I was Well, 12. we've come... We've actually come a long way with mental health awareness Mm -hmm. since then. Because there was like a severe lack of tools, a severe lack of education, a severe lack of conversation. That everyone Mm -hmm. felt like they were alone. And with the growth of the internet, I think it's more people are reached can at least like, if you don't feel like you can turn to somebody in your personal life, you can at least kind of reach out online Mm-hmm. Be like, has somebody gone through this? And the amount of people who can reach back and say, of course, we have, we can help you through this. Mm. Yeah, there are support groups now. If you're on Reddit, there are Reddit threads specifically mm-hmm. for mental health. If there's a certain issue, whether you struggle in the bipolar department or you're Borderline. going through a specific trauma, there's always going to be some group out there that has gone through that and that you can reach out to for help. It's okay to ask for help. Don't feel like you have to go through something alone because you don't. The world is big. There are people everywhere. At least one person out there has gone through what you're going through. And I'm pretty sure you can find anyone to even listen to you because sometimes you don't want advice. Sometimes you just want to talk. Yep. And that's okay too. I have had conversations where like people start, I'm like, do you want me to help you or do you just want to, do you just want to go? You're like, I just want to go. It's like, okay, I need to know before I ruin it, <laughs> before I ruin mm-hmm. this interaction. I'm very much like Chandler in that department also. When I, can I think. offer a sarcastic comment. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe some cheese. Sometimes that helps. The it cheese. Cheese is good. So. Not not me, but other people. The cheese can help. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and as someone who is currently starting an antidepressant journey, because this shit just keeps getting worse, help is... I mean, I've been talking to my counselor for a while now, and she's mm. like, you gotta do something because we're not getting anywhere because you're not in the right headspace or something then you can get medication or or something else maybe to just check a little because you get stuck in this dark place and it's really hard to think that it's ever gonna change and I don't know so you can't really just fix that with with therapy also you have to like maybe sometimes you have to check it up a little and And medication's not failing because like you know like yeah. People see medication as like, well, I, I should be able to do this by myself. And it's like, no, not really, mm. because it's down to like a brain chemistry thing. Like you wouldn't think you can get over a broken leg by yourself because that's not how it works. You need like mm. a cast and you need like medical care to help you. Mental health, like it's, some of it's just brain chemistry just isn't where it needs to be. And you need a little help to get to where your so, so you you need some help to get your body to where it needs to be where it can heal and that's what it is that's what medication is and yes. of course just a little boost basically yes if you can't produce your own store bought serotonin it's just <laughs> as good it's my favorite quote and <laughs> i don't know who said it but it's beautiful I'm yeah medication sure that's from my mfm Five yeah, but uh, I think Georgia stole it from someone. <laughs> Surprise. I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, yeah. with medication, like sometimes it takes testing to go through what medication will actually work for you and whatnot because mm. we haven't done a whole bunch of research into it. So it's all still a giant mystery. So finding the right medication for you might take time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it and took me, I think, a few months. I did one for one month and it made me almost kill myself. And then the, another one. I was fine. It worked mm. immediately and I was happier and I could get out of bed, which is fun. Walking around and shit. <laughs> what is that? And like the medication failing, like not working for you is not a failure on your part. That's mm-hmm. just, that's not the right medication for you and that's okay. We're all we'll different people. Our brains work differently. You mm-hmm. might need something more than what you're given and that's okay. It also helps to have friends who have gone through the same thing or it takes some kind of different medication i posted a picture on instagram that i was gonna start taking these pills and so many of my friends reached out and they were like oh my god i used to take them too or i've taken them too and i'm currently on them and like so you could 
talk to each other about it. And that was kind of a unexpected and nice experience. So reach out, talk about it. It's scary as hell, but it's like, Mm -hmm. it's also very easy to get stuck in the headspace that I'm so broken, nothing can fix me. Mm -hmm. But sometimes talking about it can help you fix you. And that's like, it's worth a shot at any, any given time. We are not alone in this huge, empty world. Because there are aliens. Oh, please come take me already. <laughs> if you're listening to this, come for me. I'm ready. You know they're watching. They're just like, there's, they put something here. They're just watching it like a soap opera. Like, oh, what happened on the Earth show today? Oh, damn. <laughs> that is also my best coping. Excuse me, but Real Housewives of Atlanta got me through my <laughs> darkest time this summer. <laughs> I just like, I watched eight seasons in a couple of weeks. It was the best. Oof. Thank you, oh, Atlanta. Yeah. Also, like, You're don't, welcome. don't feel bad about, like, if whatever is making you feel better doesn't hurt anybody else, don't feel bad about what mm-hmm. you're doing to make yourself feel better. If it's, if it's like, trashy television show, then do it. Yes. <laughs> like, if, it, like, whatever, like, if you need something to help you get through a super bad time and it's not hurting anybody else, If it's it. McDonald's at 2 a.m., you go get McDonald's at 2 a.m. Unless you live in Sweden, because it's harder here. I was super stressed out, and I ordered $100 worth of Cajun food. Um, (gasps) We got crab boil delivery, because that's how fat I was. It was so so good, but I also need something that's cheaper when I am feeling sad, because I can't (laughs) Mm -hmm. just spend $100 every time I'm sad. (laughs) I think that's why Taco Bell is like the sweet spot, because you can buy so much shit for $10. And be like, oh. yes, I want the cr- – yes, I want – oh, good. The nacho Give me that bag. taco Fantastic. box thing that has, like, ten tacos, like, five chalupas, and you're sad. I'm sad. I don't know why your cherry Pepsi is better than everyone else's cherry Pepsi, but give it to me. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Eat food. Eat snacks. Watch TV. Thank Atlanta. You know, we need moodlets like over our heads. Like, yeah, what do I feel right now? Please change yes. colors. Yes, because also I think I was telling you guys before. Like, I was like, you can track what I got obsessive over through. Like, I realized looking back, I was like, oh, I was going through depressive episodes. That's why I got super obsessed with Harry Potter. That's why I got super obsessed with Lost. And like, I could mm. track like my super depressive things through whatever addiction, like outworldly like super in-depth uh thing fantasy thing i was getting into at the time i was like oh those were just very different depressive episodes and i was finding it something external that i could focus on and obsess over to deal with it and that's how i was dealing with it (laughs) i do mine with hobbies oh my god like my craft room is full of different kinds of crafts i have a sewing machine i don't sew anymore but i did for a while (laughs) um (laughs) I have woodworking stuff. I did that for a while. What? I was bad. Well, damn. So I think I'm the craft person of of the group. So mm-hmm. you can tell that I'm going through some shit when I start posting <laughs> new stuff on my Etsy show. <laughs> <laughs> the trauma. <laughs> oh. Uh, I'm so sorry. Julie was actually going to do a really good uh, segue. And I really no, that's okay. Segue. <laughs> no, we can talk so about segue. how... Buffy got me through my parents' divorce, and now I'm watching Buffy again. So I'm just like, what am I experiencing? This Game of is- Thrones. I was I got super into Game of Thron- Thrones, and then I read all the Song of Ice and Fire books because mm-hmm. it was after my mom died, and then I graduated mm-hmm. college, uh, like, ne- like later, like three months later, and then I was trying to do real world, real world stuff, but I didn't have any money, and then my dad sold the house I grew up in, so then I was like. Tr- frantically trying to find a place to live but i had no money and i was just panicking and i was like you all know what i'm gonna do i'm gonna read about westeros and just <laughs> like focus on that i guess yes uh, oh honey escapism is my favorite thing like my both my counselor and the doctor i was seeing for my medication she was like oh but do you do anything for fun i'm like i play a lot of games and they were like well if you like that that's good But I was like, it's not like in a healthy way. I just play it for 12 hours straight. And I'm just not experiencing the world. They're like, it's fine. It's the corona anyway. You do what you need to do. (laughs) Yes. Yeah, like what what are you going to do? You're going to go outside? No. (laughs) You're going to meet people? 
honey, <laughs> go to a restaurant. I do you ain't got no to, money. Like, when I, because the World of Warcraft is also something I did, but I was sad for a mm-hmm. while. And when I restarted it, I had to make a rule for myself of I will never, I can never like real world like people who want to hang out like real world activities i cannot say no to them to play this game if somebody <gasps> asks me to go do something i have to stop playing and go like it doesn't matter if i'm in a group or not like an online they will recover i cannot put this game above <laughs> actual interaction like i did when i was like spinning out of control before because this was more controllable <laughs> like it was like i got to put up rules otherwise i think i might go back so, like, there are rules. Like, this, I, if people ask me to go do stuff, I will do it, and I will turn off the game. Like, I had to put rules down for myself. It's very healthy. That's also good. Good for you. There was growth. <laughs> I'm segueing now. Okay. Let's segway. talk about emotions, feelings. Sims have them. Well, in Sims 3, they didn't really have emotions, but they had moods and moodlets. And uh, they had a lot of them. So, uh, we talked a little bit about Spa that's been with us forever. And uh, they would get some positive moodlets, like relaxed, rejuvenated, or even completely at ease. And they would add up to a 75, 75% mood boost, which is very that's a nice. Mood boost. Damn. Right? Uh, pregnant Sims could get a massage because uh, they had some wants. One of my pregnant Sims wanted a lot of spaghetti and ice cream. Mm-hmm. I just didn't know how to fix that, so I sent her to the spa, and that worked out great. I think the spaghetti <laughs> and ice cream was on purpose. I think like they gave them weird wants. Also, you purpose. can't fix it, or you can't. Ma- I can't make it for her because that was just. I just wanted to give her spaghetti and ice cream. I don't think it was a flaw. I think it was a, what is that? When it's not a flaw, it's a feature. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> if a pregnant woman wants something, you fucking go get it for them. So I Daniel, would. if you are listening to this, next time I ask for a fucking <laughs> carrot cake at 3 a.m., you better get me my goddamn carrot cake. Jesus, get her the carrot cake. She's I went by myself. Alert. He was you like, by yourself? Yeah, he was like, I don't think you need it. It's late. Just go to bed. I <gasps> got in the fucking car, drove myself to Kroger, and got my damn carrot cake. And I ate I it need. in bed in front of him. So, <laughs> suck it. <laughs> That's the passive aggressive queen we like to see. <sighs> But anyways, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, that's okay. Because <laughs> that's what I wanted to do for my sim. I wanted to give her everything. But I just got her a spa treatment and she was fine. Uh, and with Sims 3 World Adventure, which was the first expansion pack that we got, they also had incense, very similar to Sims 4 Spa Day. So the different places you could go to, China, France, or Egypt, uh, trademark, and they had different um, incense and they had different boosts. So the uh, the one, the Chinese incense holder is Neurotic Synergy. Neuronic? Yeah, not neurotic. That's not neuronic. So it's a... Uh, 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 yes. A synergetic mind is more powerful mind. Promote more synergy in your life today. Synergy. Sounds like a man from Walmart. Yeah. Or <laughs> Wall Street. Someone I've... <laughs> like a free sample I attempt to avoid. <gasps> yes. <door>. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it can be a guy giving out a free sample or a guy trying to get you to invest. <laughs> I don't. And it's weird. You buy your bitcoins here today. <laughs> oh, yes. <God. laughs> and then the French instance holder is, of course, l'amour. Eh oui. The très, I don't know. Eva, please. <laughs> Love is in the air. And uh, so you get a romantic boost. 10% mood, 10% yeah whatever Egyptian the Egyptian instant holder is totally mellow and also a 10 plus mood the fragrant smoke of the incense leads to a completely laid back and at ease state of mind for sims that's very nice also in world adventure your sims could get zen by visiting the scholar's garden in Shang Simla which would add a 20 plus mood boost which is very nice um also sims that didn't leave the house would get a stir crazy negative moodlet that would oh. stay on until they left the house so they would be a little mm. and uh, we actually have a thing called lappsjuka here in sweden it's uh, when you haven't been 
when you don't know what time of day it is and you just stay inside. So you're like a little bit crazy. Like if you live in a bunker or a place where it's dark 30 days and 30 nights. So my weekend? Yes. Yeah, I've had this like a roulette for six months, I think, or when, yeah. whatever March was. <laughs> Oh, it's almost gonna, been a year. It's almost a I did, year. I did get to go to the zoo with my family because, like, it's outside and you can wear a mask. And there's a baby <gasps> lion at the Detroit Zoo right now. He's so cute. We went into lockdown on my birthday. <laughs> oh, no. So my birthday has now been tainted by COVID. So thank you. Oh, because I live in Sweden. Uh, we have no lockdowns or no nothing. No rules. Just death sweet sweet death it's uh, so I celebrated my birthday like normal <laughs> I was out in a restaurant I was having a good time didn't wear a mask <laughs> so, oh, oh god no. I hate my country <laughs> anyways um, I think this is also I'm a little stir crazy right now I'm just going a little bit unhinged um, <clears throat> with uh, Sims Generations which has been talked about in a recent cow plant episode. So you should check that out. But there your sims could also experience midlife crises. Um, so there's a whole point system to if your sim would get a midlife crisis or not. So a lot of things you like decisions and stuff that you make for your sim is going to affect the fact if they're going to have one so uh, a lot of the stuff are like a low career or maybe unemployment that adds points there's also if you or sim get married early or never gets married that adds points having children early also add points every every divorce every breakup and every death that your sim experience would also add point and percentage to oh, the no. crisis which is Horrible. There's also a mod for this. If you still play Sims 3 and you want to get a little bit of handle on it, there is a mod that you can trace this with. You can control it a little bit. Be yes. Like, oh, no. <laughs> Don't control the crisis in every way you can. Uh, the moodlets last a varied amount. Uh, and if your Sim would get a midlife crisis wish, then you would have to fulfill that wish or it wouldn't go away and constantly add a minus 20 mood. Ooh. There is the <laughs> feeling alive moodlet. So when your midlife crisis sim is riding a motorcycle or a car that's worth 50,000 simoleons. You want to get a 20 plus mood? Yeah. You should get more. Right? You spend 50,000 simoleons on a car and you get a boost of 20. So weird. Uh, There's also after the midlife crisis, there are some moodlets. There's like barely fulfilled, pleasantly fulfilled or supremely fulfilled. And they last 10 days. So that's pretty nice. Uh, but also, if you're if you're like me, tired of these motherfuckers with their motherfucking midlife crises, they can go to the hospital and get therapy. Therapy, yes. Uh, which is the first time that therapy is like. Well, we have the shrink in Sims Two, and then we have therapy in this the very specific. The shrink is also like a figment of their imagination, so. <laughs> It's, True. It's there, but it, I think it does showcase like mental health wasn't a whole big thing in the mm. early aughts. Like it is, it was just starting to be acknowledged as, oh, maybe people, maybe regular people can get help from this. Mm. <laughs> yep. And then they went into a, a step into the right direction and gave us actual therapy. And then The Sims Four ruined all of that. Mm-hmm. But as we did should. get therapy once. <laughs> Well, Sims 4, I'm going to take that, take that yes. opportunity. So Sims 4 in Parenthood, they actually gave something very, which I think, like they gave children and teens a way to deal with their emotions in a positive way and mm-hmm. learn from it. So from toddler to teenager, one of the five character values, because I think we've talked about Parenthood in another pack, so I'm not going to get too much into what the other emotion what the character values are but one of the five character values a sims can become good in is emotional control so when sims are growing up and they're faced with a strong emotion they can have outlets to help calm themselves down so like melly said like some people go for a run so like these sims can now write in a journal they can jog to clear their mind they can listen to classical music they can play instruments with emotion they can play like kids can play with emotion and it helps calm them down 
and it like eases out their their anger. So teenager, so like this happens so much when I play with the Parenthood Pack. A teenager comes home and the teenager's emotions are extreme. Like they're like plus fifty or like plus seventy, like all the time. Like they're when they're angry, they're angry. They're like you can't age up. If a teenager is in one of their teenage rages and you age them up to an adult, they die. <laughs> so what? an adult can't deal with the teenage rage. So warning. But it, say Do you, you want to get trauma before you grow up. Pretty oh much. Oh my god. Mm. So like so if your teen comes home and they're like pissed at something that happened to school because teenagers like with the hormones, their emotions are all, all like everywhere and they're extreme. So if you have them jog, that lowers their their rage and like their emotional control meter goes up or they can write in their journal like they can like uh scribble angrily in their journal uh but if you don't use like let's say you decide to not take care of them that way and you don't give them those options they will like destroy dollhouses they'll destroy school projects they'll like be they'll rage at some people the sims and they'll earn like negative emotional control so as long you can guide them in the correct way to deal with their emotions, and if a sim achieves the emotional control state, they are uh, if the sim grows up with enough points in the emotional control column, they earn an emotional control uh, trait. They can keep those abilities when they become an adult. So, say like you do that, you can then have the option to okay, I'm super mad right now. I'm gonna jog just to get myself in control. So, like, that's oh. something that gives their sims a positive way to deal with their emotions. And it also, so, so in adulthood, they have ways to get their negative emotions to leave faster than regular sims. Which is a way that, like, self-care has been actualized more so than these other ones. Because other ones you just kind of have to manage much. the wants and fears. But this is like, okay, we can get this. I'm going to get myself under control using things that I learned as a kid. So there are mild props to them for that. I really, really do like the emotional control thing. That they, I wish like you didn't need the pack for it. I kind of wish adults mm. could learn it after the fact. But that was the whole feature of the, the game pack. So Yeah, adults are just fucked. <laughs> yeah, if you don't, if you didn't get that emotional control trait, then you're just screwed up. Hey, so, you just get to cry on your plants and hope it works out. <laughs> yes. But um, Sims and Act didn't get it. They haven't improved every time. They uh, had a kind of a, a big misstep in Sims Three and Sims The 4. Sims mm-hmm. controversy. Say no. it so. Not in my <laughs> Sims game. <laughs> Um, yeah, so um, we had a lot more traits in Sims 3. We all know. Some of them were good, like the... I don't know. I liked a lot of them. All of them. They were amazing. Except for one, which I didn't realize then was weird. But now I realize, yes. The insane trait, obviously, which now in Sims 4 they changed later on to... Uh, it's now called Erratic. But it's still a, um, you know, those confinement shirts. What are they called? That you put on psych ward patients. The, oh, fuck. What are they called? The restraints? Yeah, yeah, restraint sweaters. Yeah, so it's like one of those that is the trade icon for it. So it's, I mean, at least in Sims 3, it was a derpy smiley. <laughs> I mean, it's not better, but uh, yeah. Uh, so I read this article in Kotaku, um, which is this gaming, um, amongst other things, I think. But their, um, their article is called uh, Sims Insane Trade Sucks. And we're going to link it, obviously. But the edit, the writer, oh, sorry, whose name I completely forgot to put here. I'm so sorry. I'm just going to quickly. Just... Apology rejected, Julia. Do better. Um, no. It's Gita Jackson. Jesus. So sorry. Yeah, so Gita Jackson wrote this as um, how do how do the insane Sims act? In Sims 3, they would generate wishes that might be not be possible to complete, wear random outfits such as donning sleepwear during the day, and could fish in swimming pools. In Sims 4, 
the sims with insane traits have random emotions rather than ones influenced influenced by their environment they get angry sad embarrassed or have uh, or what what have you for no reason in both games insane sims can talk to themselves uh, to fill their social need i mean that's handy though honestly um the sims who have the insane trait do not have any rationality their lives are ruled by randomness in since three insane sims would reply randomly to marriage proposals rather than being it based on their relationship if they were broken up with they'd also take it out on other sims at random rather than the sim who hurt them in sims 4 insane sims mutter to themselves and when you select the insane trait on the create a sim screen they would shout at the screen and make a, a deranged face and that's like this disgusting awesome i think for me personally the issue with this trait mm. is it's Describing schizophrenia, which is already mm. a very taboo mental illness, people mm. who know of schizophrenia always give it a very negative reaction to it, like yeah. if they're not people too, and that's not really nice because mm -hmm. um, it is a mental illness and it is something that they can't control and they should be able to feel accepted in the world like everyone else just because their mental illness is at a different level and their reality isn't the same as ours doesn't mean that they're not people too and it's not always represented correctly like schizophrenia is one of those things that always pops up in media but it's not always represented correctly so people mm. don't even have a good idea of what it is no, they just think that it's a crazy person with hallucinations. And it's so much more than that. And I yeah. wish people would stop making movies where the villain or so is schizophrenic. Because mm -hmm. it just paints schizophrenic people as evil. And they're not. I often confused with multiple personality disorder. Mm -hmm. uh, like they describe schizophrenic people as, oh, I have so many people inside of me. But that's not, it's, it's not, no. That's not schizophrenia. That's D and D and D. I think it's called. Mm. Um, but there's that's the thing. There are so many different mental disorders, and we try to categorize them into as many little sections as possible. Like, oh, you're either bipolar, or you're depressed, but it's more than that. There are too many things to talk about, and mm. we need to start talking about them more because. Just because you're mentally ill does not mean that you are a bad person. While there are some people who have mental illnesses that have done bad things, that does not umbrella everyone into those same categories. Mm -hmm. And it does seem like after this article was written, mm -hmm. uh, it was written in March of a certain time period. 2018. And then in April... 17th there was a patch that was released in Sims 4 and that's when it changed from uh insane to erratic in the game <gasps> oh. but it wasn't meant it wasn't mentioned in the patch notes that they did it but um i this i'm reading from a pc gamer article mm -hmm. uh make no mention of the change but ea confirmed it in an email that the insane trait was renamed to erratic Quote, our game celebrates life and the people in it. As language evolves, we want to take steps needed to ensure players feel they can have a great time without distracting language that is not always current or appropriate, a rep said. We can make the change to better reflect the design of the trait. I don't mm. know if this is EA's brand, but they like putting shit in their game without research, without knowledge, and then later, once it gets brought up, they like to change it and be like, oh no, we're being better. Like, this should not have been in their period. Same mm. with the cultural appropriation shit. You should have mm. checked that shit at the door. I don't know what their steps are when it comes to, like, quality control, but they need to fire whoever's doing it because <laughs> it's been one too many times at this point. We don't have to go on a fucking Twitter hashtag trending shit to get them to change shit. It should be already done, especially being a big corporation and having all of this money and, and all of resources. these people. Yeah. Mm. yeah, if indie games have done it from the get, why can't you do it? Yeah, it's the, it's they want to paint themselves as the good guy. We are learning. Mm -hmm. You're learning after the fact. It's not the same. You're being as educated. Actual. Let's get it right. Mm -hmm. And Julia, didn't you find a mod that can actually put? Yes. So fair. 
uh, if you want to play with some mental health issues or um, diversities, there is a mod called, also forgot to put it up here. So sorry. I'm so slow. <laughs> it's just called mental health. <laughs> and it's a mod created by uh, Zero Sims for mods and comics. So uh, this mod requires an XML injector mod and the ability to read. I thought that was just okay. <laughs> so I can't uh, read, so I can solve the mod. No. Uh, there are 11 possible disorders that your uh, sims can be di diagnosed with. Uh, ADHD, anxiety, bipolar disorder, borderline clinical depression, de dependent personality, eating disorder, gender dysphoria, narcissistic disorder, OCD, and schizoid. There's also two not chronic ones, PTSD and general depression, which is me. Because if you didn't know, there are multiple types of depression. Yes. Uh, uh, in this mod... <laughs> Right? So many forms. It's not just I was in war and now I'm sad. It's so many different forms. Every every trauma gives you a little bit of PTSD, I would assume. Um, your uh, Sims can, with this mod, get a therapist. And uh, he says here also, like an exclaimer, they are not meant to be a 100% accurate representation of real-life disorders. They're more a generic Sims version. There are too many variables depending on single individuals to represent something like this properly. Which is like... I do think that's why the game hasn't put more in like because i think i've seen people mm. ask for it and it's like i think they'd get in trouble and they know they would by not doing it i think a mod can get away with something like this easier than the game can and i think mm. the game i think ea knows like we would mess this up <laughs> so we will mm. um choose not. to not oh your sim will be away for a while and come back with the die oh so it to get this you uh, get on your Sims phone and, and then click to book an appointment with a psychiatrist to get a diagnosis. It's and then the it will... Hole. Yeah. So many factors can impact the outcome. It's very much random. But men should be more likely to be narcissistic and schizoid. Uh, and women and teens are more likely to have eating disorders. So he made it very... I don't like that. Life-like. Okay, sorry. What? Well, that I, is that is technically I, that happens more often. Mm, a little bit. Yeah, but I guess. But I just feel like it shouldn't be classified as genders just because not everyone identifies with genders. But that's like a whole But I think topic. Yeah. For Sims though, you can have you can have like trans sims, but we can't really have non binary sims. So I, I think you changed it so you could. You can have gender fluid, kind of. You can change it around so that, like, your but male can you change can their pronouns and stuff? That's what I'm thinking. Like, because I don't think they, do, do Sims use pronouns? Yeah, I guess they do in their text. I don't think mm. you can change the pronouns. There's just a lot that needs to be changed in, in the world in general. You need to be more accepting of other people and be considerate of, like, when you do do a game that's based on. To be fair, I do think, didn't they do, like, they did the update to make them more general fluid, and they did that without, like, there wasn't, like, a big, put, like, I don't remember, like, the anger, like, imagine the anger people have that things aren't farms. I mm -hmm. don't remember seeing that as much for it before they, uh, to be fair, I was not as involved in the Sims community as I am now, mm -hmm. but, because they just kind of announced it, it was a free update, they're like, oh yeah, we, we just uh, let you guys, they kind of let us see the options, they didn't. The masculine feminine things you could switch them around so you could have like they did it they're like okay we did this it's free mm. that also needs to change in the sims community you guys want to bitch and fight about fucking farm animals and babies doing cartwheels but you get upset <laughs> about getting equal representation in skin tones I got into a fight on Twitter about that. Some fucking kid at me. He's like, I'd rather have babies work than changing my skin tone. Yeah, that I'm like, bullshit. I mean, assume you're white. Um, <laughs> so just shut the fuck up. Yep. I will fight people on Twitter. I'm not scared. So if, if you follow me on Twitter, I apologize. <laughs> I just want to say, though, this mod, if you want to play it, it also um, encourages people to go to therapy so everyone can use therapy not only the ones who have um, 
diagnoses. And there are different kinds of support groups. So it's like, if you're afraid to do therapy in real life or something, you could just practice a little with your sims, with this mod, if you want to. I think they just circles back around to ask for help. There are mm-hmm. support groups out there for you if you can't afford therapy because not everyone can because therapy is a privilege, unfortunately, if you're American. <laughs> yeah, but here in Sweden as well, there's like you have to be able to advocate a lot for yourself and for your own like decide because if you're not head fast and like I want to get help, some <laughs> they feels like the your GP can like talk you out of it almost like are you sure it's not just you don't you shouldn't you just take a walk like that oh. that happened to me th- which is why it's taking me this long to actually get help that's so, to medical professionals that don't advocate for you they advocate for their wallets mm-hmm. stop it <laughs> oh that's that's not a thing in sweden though they just don't want the workload here that's ugh. yeah ugh. yeah mental health so Yay! <laughs> it's a ride but it's worth it also shout out to my doctor who was like don't worry because i asked if i was going to gain weight with the new pills uh, because that has been a thing i've been talking thinking about a lot for myself that i gained weight now during the lockdown and stuff like that and that just spirals easily for me because i had an eating disorder when i was younger and my doctor was like but you shouldn't worry about that. Like your weight is not important. What's important is your health. So there are golden people out there that would like not say mean things about your body, even though physicians do like to do that. So yeah, that's I. I've always felt like certain doctors focus too much on your appearances. Like you don't look healthy, but as long as you feel healthy and mm. you're not harming yourself like fuck that right just do you cheeseburgers at 2 a.m club sizes people Mm -hmm. that's just me i've always been a very small person um when i was in high school actually i used to have people ask me if i was anorexic or if i (laughs) needed to go throw up after lunch and oh my god for a while that disturbed me a lot and then one day I was at Wendy's ordering a meal and this bitch behind me was like, do you want me to buy you an extra burger? It looks like you need one. <gasps> oh, I hit her. Yes. And at that moment, I was like, you know what? My weight does not define who I am. I am happy with myself. And then later I got diagnosed with hypothyroidism and it made mm-hmm. sense why I cannot gain weight. So mm-hmm. fuck those people. When <laughs> fuck I was- those bitches. So when I was in high school, I so I was on the swim team, which meant like I was swimming like six to eight hours every week, and I was Dang. five two. I was five two and a hundred and ten pounds with muscle. I was little, and my. I'm sorry. I just have to do a qu- conversion. Conversion. <laughs> <laughs> but my when swim season ended, my mom was like, so. I think everyone can kind of tell when you gain five pounds and that messed with my like opinion of myself of like my weight ever since because I could never Oh my god, you were so tiny, like short. I'm sorry, you're so short. (laughs) I am short. It's true. (laughs) It's true. But like (sighs) my mom telling me like, well, everyone, and I think it was more of a projection on her because she, she was overweight and she didn't want me to become overweight, which I am now. But like, I thought that I was big. Who isn't honey? I thought I was big because my mom said that everyone could tell that I gained five pounds. So I was oh. like, what? <laughs> like, oh, so I'm fat is what I, I took think out that's of that? a parent thing because when I was pregnant, I gained a lot of weight. I've always well, been <laughs> about 90 pounds mm. my entire life. And then pregnancy hit and I was like 140 pounds. And that fucked with my head a lot because I've never seen myself bigger than like a plank. I can call myself a plague. It's okay. It's me. Um, and then after pregnancy, I've gained, I've lost a little bit of the weight, but I'm like at 120 now. And I've never been over 100 pounds. But I you, like how I look yeah, now. Yeah, I bet you're curvy. Like, I bet money, like. Yeah, like my hips kind of um, separated, and that doesn't go back after you give birth, which they don't tell you that. Your hips will 
stay that um, way. Yeah. Once you Ugh. push out a kid, your hips don't go back to how they used to be. So I look kind of weird because my hips are wide, but then everything else is like tiny. Um, I have boobs now. I didn't have boobs before. How does so that feel? Do you like them? <laughs> I don't like it because I sleep on my stomach. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So th- that's been an adjustment. But I like how I look. I'm very comfortable in my skin. People have mentioned it like, hey, you look a little fatter. I'm like, hey, you look ah, a little stupider. Really? Um, <laughs> well, like when like, I <laughs> when I went to college, I gained weight and like I wasn't swimming like I was. So like I gained like that freshman 15 and I kind of liked how I looked a little bit more when I had that like extra like that extra 15 pounds on. Like I liked it more then like i'm way over that now but like i was like i think i prefer this to the one i was super skinny because also i was fucking hungry i was hungry all i was eating all the time because i was losing calories that metabolism like, you know, metabolism and swimming is like if you're like slap swimming if you're competitive swimming that is so many calories that burn out because you're also working so many muscles I was just starving all the time, which I never learned how to course correct my eating <laughs> because... Of course, because you were a teenager. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. In conclusion, as long as you're happy with your body and you're not, like, medically hurting yourself, then fuck it, eat that burger. Mm-hmm. And also slap every bitch that comments on your weight. I slapped the man in a club because he called me a cow and I'm never looking back. <sighs> <laughs> same if you talk about me i'm gonna throw hands with you because <laughs> who are you to tell me what i need to look like i am happy with myself therefore your opinion does not matter so suck it if only that was how you really feel on the inside what do i do <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna do plugs. <laughs> Please plug in the episode. I tried yes. to segue earlier, but then we got we started going again. Okay, plugs. Sorry. Okay, we are Plum Bob Podcast on Instagram and Twitter. We are Plum Bob Podcast on Reddit. We are under the Plum Bob Podcast on Facebook and Tumblr. So you can just search our name on there. We'll show up. Our website is under the plumbob.com. You can there's a contact form to contact us, or you can just email us at under the Plum Bob Podcast at gmail.com. Please subscribe, rate, and review so we can get that positive validation that we talked about earlier so we feel vindicated and happy about the work that we do. I just want to feel appreciated. You can join. We have a Patreon if you want to join us. Uh, We haven't gone over what the Patreon has in a second, so we're going to do that real fast. If you give us a dollar... A dollar a month, you get access to our Discord channel where we talk to our Patreon members. Uh, I have a book club that sometimes we read the book and sometimes we don't. Sometimes we all show up and we're like, we didn't finish. And we all go, same. Let's just talk about, let's just talk for a couple, for a while. Uh, At the second tier level, that's when you get access to our bonus episodes, which are once a month. We like, we kind of try to live out our other, like, you know what? I always wanted to be a true crime podcaster. Let's talk about let's talk about some true crime. Or let's yeah, they're talk not about- Sims related. So if you want to hear us talk about non sim things, because some of us are actually pretty like excited to talk about other things, that's mm-hmm. where where mm-hmm. that goes in. Uh, and the third level, Melody, do you want to talk about what they get at the third level? Because you get all that stuff, and we're gonna be rolling out some fun like merch stuff, sort of ish. You get cool things that other people don't get. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's all. And you get you want the cool things because I think, you want to be cool. And Melly's in charge of making them, so it's a Melly original. Yeah. I make mm-hmm. stuff for you guys. I haven't sent them out yet because life has been a little hectic on my end. But it's on my calendar now, so I'm gonna do it, and you're gonna get it in the mail soon. <laughs> Stop asking me. <laughs> And uh, also, you keep helping Melly with her mental health because she likes creating mm-hmm. stuff. So, you know, I do. it's fun for me, and it's so it's it's me letting off steam from work because work can be a lot sometimes. On like our Discord, we do like our build challenges. So, like our Zwillow, we used our Discord and our Simizens to help with our Zwillow challenge. They went through that uh, stress factor with us. Uh, <laughs> Um, we also doing- apologize to our Patreons because sometimes things get rough and they get to hear it first. Yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> we apologize to them. 
Uh, we do build challenges with shells that uh, people make, and then we try we decorate them, and we showcase our Simizens builds in our showcases that we do on Twitch. Uh, oh yeah, we're also on Twitch. Uh, we're gonna roll out some new scheduling stuff. All I know is that I'm on Tuesdays at like 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. <laughs> I'm Yay. gonna yeah, so we're gonna get that sorted out for me as well, so I can start building in Oasis Springs again because. That land grab house put it me broke off. You man, it, it broke really you. did. It was <sighs> a nonsense house. Um, it was. Thank you to the Sims Wiki for the information you provided. Thank you to the mental health care professionals that helped us learn things about ourselves. The uh, kids the, on TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, honestly, uh, the work brighter article that I read from that we're going to link to, and also the um, Reddit thread of people like using Sims to help realize their mental health and thank you for listening to us guys before we um sign off into the real world i just want to make a note that we are not mental health experts and all of this is our opinions Mm -hmm. um it's just us talking about our personal experience obviously everyone's experience differs but we just want to let you guys know that you're not alone in the world and we are here for you so every join Wednesdays. the Discord if you want to chat. <laughs> mm-hmm. Every Wednesdays for everyone else, and if you're on our Discord, we're there every day. So mm-hmm. that's all. And now back to the real world and save your game. Wash your hands. Save your game. Wash your hands. Wear your mask. Uh, eat two a.m. burgers. Yes, that's that, the hill I want to die on. <laughs> that Taco Bell cherry Pepsi. <laughs> Okay, bye. (laughs) Bye. Let's just make the sign up as like. Caitlin, say bye. Oh, bye. Sorry. Bye. (laughs)